Hello and welcome to Capital Ideas TV. I'm Mark Bunting. Shatter is one of the more potent cannabis concentrates, but it's just a sliver of the market today dwarfed by dried herb and oils. But this device could change everything. You're looking at the Shatterizer, a new type of vaporizer that lets users take a clean, controlled dose of shatter. It's a product launched by Halo Labs, a cannabis firm on the leading edge of consumer tastes. It's been carving out a diverse line of concentrates like edibles, oils, waxes, and resins using proprietary manufacturing techniques. It's this focus on innovation that's propelled impressive growth in the company's top line. Halo Labs saw its revenue triple to more than 8.7 million U.S. dollars in the first quarter. That sales growth was the third highest among cannabis producers operating in the U.S. It also put Halo Labs on track for annual revenue growth of a blistering 332%. The company's expansion into California and Nevada has put it on the radar of some of the biggest markets in the U.S. And now Halo Labs has an ambitious strategy to take its products across international borders. In another move, the company recently acquired Bofello Biosciences, a producer based in the tiny African nation of Lesotho. Bofello holds a hefty five hectares of prime greenhouse property. It estimates it can produce export-ready cannabis oils for about $2 a gram, and it's slated to start shipping to the massive European market by the middle of next year. Kieran Sadu is the CEO spearheading Halo Labs' diversification strategy. He believes building credible cannabis brands is the key to unlocking international revenue potential. Sadu recently explained his roadmap to creating a powerhouse in the global cannabis concentrates market. Kieran, you were last here nine months ago, and so much has happened with uh, Halo Labs since then, not the least of which is your expansion into California and Nevada. And let's focus on, on California first, because uh, the numbers were really borne out in, in Q1 with revenue up year over year more than 300%. So what's the impact been in California on the company in terms of production and revenue and margins? So um, California is our largest growth catalyst. It happens also to be the largest cannabis market in the world. Um, and we are continuing to see um, growth uh, quarter over quarter in California. Tell us more about the operations. Uh, the operation in California right now is purely a uh, bulk supply operation. So in California, we supply bulk distillate, bulk live resin, and then through a partnership um, with C4, our distribution partner, we're now distributing products to dispensaries, and we're also servicing white label clients like Caliva. Now you've uh, expanded in Nevada, you started in Oregon, which you've said in the past can be a difficult market, but I understand things are going pretty s solidly there. Right, so last year in Oregon, we, we suffered from negative gross margin, which I've never seen in any business that I've been in. And this year, um, with our uh, new chief revenue officer, David Orr, who spent 15 years at Pepsi, uh, managing you know, liquor sales and field sales, We've been able to, month over month, grow the Oregon revenue and shift that base to more profitable products and increase distribution. So Oregon in Q1 returned to positive gross profit, and we hope by Q3 it'll be contributing operating profit uh, to our bottom line. And every state has their own idiosyncrasy, so, so move along to, to Nevada and, and uh, the operations there. Well, Nevada, again, we're seeing growth. And with Nevada, I think the challenge is to have novel products. But it's, it seems that there are a lot of similar products in Nevada. The other overall challenge with Nevada as a state is that, that the biomass production is limited. So biomass costs are high, which makes the products on the dispensary shelf high relative to the black market. So besides competing with one another, we're continually competing with the black market where in Oregon it's pretty much even and the black market is dissipated within Oregon significantly. And California, it's, there isn't ample black market, but again, prices are more in line because biomass costs are low. In Nevada, they're high. Now, one of the things you're excited about, Kieran, is this arrangement that you have with Shatterizer, and you've brought one of these here. Right. Uh, do, you want to, do you want to tell us about um, the deal 
with with Shadowizer, these dab tab cartridges that you have, sure. and and why it's innovative and, and and why you you think it's important to the company. What kind of well, what are we looking at in terms of sales too? Um, so, so here's we, the device. Here's the device, and here are the dab tabs, and the Shadowizer is the first. Um, of a series of devices that are custom made for the dab tabs. And the dab tabs, when you look at them, are preloaded. These are 1 20th of a gram um, with CBD oil or cannabis oil. So you have an exact dose. And you simply take that exact dose, you lift up the, the dome, you put it in, and you click the button and you inhale, right? It's very simple. And then when you're done with it, you take it out and you throw it away. It's, it's organic and inert. And this is the only ANC, American National Standards of Institute, certified dosable product for cannabis inhalation. And are these already flying off the shelf? Um, you know, they're doing really well in Southern California. So we, through a partnership with Ease, which is the largest dispensary um, chain in California, I mean, they're a delivery chain, uh, we've already seen reorders within the first month. So among a younger demographic from 21 to 34, um, male with disposable income, they love it because it's so convenient for them and it's so easy for them to use. And that, that part on the bottom is magnetized, so that's pretty cool. It's really cool, yeah, yeah definitely. All right, so that's, that's one product. You have many other ones. Correct. You have your own products, you've got white label products. So, so give us a sense of that mix, and where do you want to get that eventually? 50-50, or does it depend on well, the state? Well, um, in Oregon, it's primarily our own products. So in Oregon, it's a state that we've been in the longest, so we go all the way from seed to the dispensary and we do our own distribution and our own sales, and there are products. And we have everything from edibles to drinks to vaporizer cartridges to dab tabs, what have you. In Nevada, um, we also primarily market our own products. We have one or two large white label clients. California, we started with bulk product. Now we have white label clients um, such as Caliva. And now we are just entering with our own products like the dab tabs. So over time, you'll see California shifting more towards our own products. Now, something else exciting at Halo Labs, way further afield in uh, Lesotho, which is this uh, small mountain kingdom surrounded by South Africa. Uh, you've bought out your partner there, and, and not only that, they've, they've taken shares in, in Halo, and uh, you have a very uh, impressive new uh, chairperson. That's right. So um, when we close uh, the acquisition, uh, Louisa Mogella will become our chairperson, or our chairman. Uh, Louisa is, was the CNBC, um, in 2016, CNBC African Businesswoman of the Year. She runs a very large private equi social equity fund. Um, she sat on the board of South African Airways, Sasol, as well as Sun International. So she brings a certain level of respectability and a certain level of corporate governance that you typically don't see in a smaller cannabis company like ourselves. And, and Lesotho itself, uh, it, uh, from a regulatory standpoint, legal standpoint, and also uh, the climate, uh, I understand is, is very uh, advantageous to you. It's um, the climate, you're at 1,000 meters, great UVB light. Uh, our license is one of the larger licenses so we're going to put uh, up to five hectares of greenhouse grow of, uh, of marijuana plants. And then we have the ability to go do two, up to 200 hectares um, outdoors. Uh, low, low power costs due to the hydraulic power, um, abundant labor, agrarian labor. Um, you know, I think it's $5 a day. It's a beautiful, beautiful situation. And you can take uh, CBDs directly from the plant uh, and, and, and explain why that there, there's that advantages in right. Lesotho compared to other jurisdictions. Right. So, so we're, we have great company in Lesotho. I mean, Supreme is there, is active. Bedrocan is active. Canopy is active. And Afri is active. Um, but one thing that's unique about Lesotho is that we can take the cannabis plant and we can extract both the cannabinoids like CB, CBD, CBG, CBN, as well as THC. We can strip off the THC, and then we can sell the CBD more freely 
Um, in certain countries, it's more regulated, but it's more freely than you can sell THC, which under UN auspices is a narcotic and a, uh, and a controlled substance. And so the idea is, is to have your facilities there uh, eventually be, become a hub to feed uh, Europe, essentially, well, and, and held, elsewhere. Held feed Europe, feed Australia, and with CBD, feed all sorts of other countries. And the advantage of being able to grow cannabis gives us, besides our, the low cost advantage of Lesotho, the ability to use cannabis to extract the seeds gives us a, almost a two to one ratio per run because they're so much more richer than the seeds than industrial hemp, which is grown for, which is grown for rope and clothing and lamp oil. Let's talk about your revenue, uh, Kieran. So in the US among cannabis related companies, you're number 11, I think, top 15. And then uh, in terms of uh, uh, revenue growth, you're number three just behind Cresco. So that's impressive. So, so what's the, the revenue run rate looking, at, uh, looking like right now? And, and when does the company get the profitability, do you think? So the other thing I'd like to point out <clears throat> is that our revenue growth has been purely organic. The first um, acquisition we've had is Buffalo, and that won't, we won't realize revenue there until maybe end of Q1 of next year. So. Uh, our growth is around 300% quarter over quarter in the first quarter. We do not see that rate of growth changing. So we see um, year over year growth continuing. We do not give quarterly guidance, but we are fairly confident that we can achieve our target of 48 million of revenue this year in the calendar year of 2019. And, and is profitability difficult to gauge right now? It's still till too early to... Well, our, whole, our goal is to have all of our operating units contribute gross profit um, to our bottom line by early Q4. Uh, the thing that we're looking at right now is our corporate overheads. So our public, cor our public company corporate overheads we're hoping to cover by the end of the year. So we're cash flow neutral by the end of the year. All right. And... Uh you have, uh, in terms of the capital structure, you have convertible debentures that you've issued, you've had warrants that you've issued. So just give us a, a quick update. What do investors need to know about and what are the exercise prices well, we, and so um, Of the 18 million of convertible debentures we issued, I think only approximately 12.9 million remain on our books. So people have converted those. Regarding our um, warrants, the 90 cent warrants are trading and they're listed and we have a, a slew of warrants at 80 cents, and we're planning to restructure those or do, do something with those in the next couple of weeks, so just stay tuned for that news. Stay tuned, and stay tuned for earnings which are coming out mid-August, right? Correct, again, being on the NEO, we're a big board company like the TSE, so we have to report 45 days um, into each cycle. Now, as far, as far as the stock, last time you were here, after you appeared, the stock went up, um, more than doubled. Right. Uh, now it's come down with the sector, still up 35% since then. So and I know you've talked about uh, a blue chip management team, uh, proprietary techniques at, at Halo Labs, and the fact that you guys have been at this since 2013. You're not Johnny come lately. So what's the message to investors who just may not be getting the story? Well, I'm obviously with earnings coming out, I can't buy my own stock, but investors can go to CDAR and see that I've been very active when I can in buying Halo Labs. So I'm a big believer and I've put my money where my mouth is. And then beyond that, do you have any other message to investors who are looking at some of your rivals, some of your peers, and, they're, and they, maybe they don't know the story that well? Uh, you know, it's just, it's steady wins the race. So if we can continue what I would call geometric, not exponential growth, and we can continue to be steady and stay focused on cannabis oils and concentrates, which represents, in my, by my estimation, 65% of all cannabis consumed, you know, we'll do well. I mean, to just give you an idea, 50,000 people use our products every month, and that's about three million servings. Uh, so you know, we're well represented, and we're growing well, and we just have to stay the course and keep delivering value to our shareholders.